Hello. I'm in uh, Central Park, in the Ramble in Central Park. I uh, walked up here from uh, 10th Street, so that means I walked, what, to maybe up, 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 I'm a, like 65th Street or something like that, so I, I like to take walks through the city and, uh, and then listen to podcasts and think. Today I was listening to, uh, just now, I was listening to Crystal Hefner uh, on a podcast um, because that's what the, the topic of the book is today. It's uh, <clears throat> Only Say Good Things, which is the memoir of Crystal Hefner, who was the, uh, the final wife. I don't know how many he ended up having, but uh, he, was, he was the final wife of... Uh, magazine media mogul uh, Hugh Hefner and uh, it's rather interesting actually because it's a it's a look inside of the Playboy Mansion uh, at in the very final years of uh, this guy Uh, he died at age 91 Uh, and uh, it's an example of somebody that should have retired. I mean, it had he uh, gotten out of it all at 70, it would have been a better thing for him, I think. Because uh, uh, what is presented in the book, the picture of uh, Hefner is really a pathetic old man uh, who was also really boring. So uh, there's that. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, so Crystal Hefner, she's uh, 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 at this point, and when she met him in, in 2008, so, you know, not that long ago in, in dog years, I guess, uh, she um, was a 21-year-old woman who, would, um, who was uh, uh, from British parents who were kind of adventurous themselves, her, her parents uh got together uh, her mother already had two children very young uh and then uh, got rid of her husband that was who abusive or something and then she uh ran into uh i think uh, ted was that his number no whatever i don't remember what her her father's name was it might have been ted or maybe that was that was her her uh, mother's uh final better husband but anyway these two people he's a musician and so he wants to come to uh hollywood and uh, become a star so uh these two young people uh head off to uh um, la to try to uh, san diego or whatever to try to uh put together and they have no green cards or anything like that and they don't know anyone so so they're kind of crazy and risky there um, he got some gigs he got everything you know went okay uh, then um, her her uh, he, his his someone in his family died and he inherited a pub so he decided to go back and um, run the pub which he did for a number of years and uh, I guess that's when crystal was born and was she born here or in, or in England? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. They uh, end up selling the pub and coming back to America and trying again. And he's on the same route again, trying to get gigs. Uh, unfortunately, he gets ill with a brain tumor and it's inoperable and he dies. And she's like 12 years old. So, so that is a horrible tragedy uh, and puts... Her and her mother in a bind because her mother does not have a green card and can't, you know, you can't really work uh, on the books if you don't have documentation like that. So, um, so Crystal and mother are, are struggling uh, and um, that's kind of where she's from and, and she's gone to, to school some and she's, uh, you know, trying, trying to find her way, whatever. Uh, while she was in school, she got a uh, uh, breast implants. So um, 
and uh, she tells about how these things are done. The surgeon in this case came in through, through her uh, abdomen, somewhere in her abdomen, and ran the bags of, uh, that are going to take the uh, saline solution, whatever, up into the breast area, uh, sliding under the skin uh, on the whole abdomen up into the breast area. And then, uh, I guess, putting a hose up there or some sort of a device that then would fill the uh, thing up. And she said she didn't even know what size she was getting or anything. So she got these, you know, fake breasts. Uh, also more stuff in the background before that, when she was in high school uh, or, or right after high school, she had a, a, a boyfriend who she really loved and uh, Greg. And um, they split up for some reason and, you know, just probably would have gotten back together, that kind of thing. Uh, and Greg goes off to uh, one of our great wars, uh, saving freedom for people or whatever we're doing, and um, he dies in the war. So that's the end of, that's the end of Greg. So, uh, so she has these two significant male deaths uh, early in her life before she's 21. And uh, you know, she's an attractive woman. So, you know, not, not uh, unlike, I guess, the Dorothy Stratton story. She's attractive and noticed for being attractive. And uh, um, well, where Dorothy Stratton got all involved with uh, Paul Schneider. Uh, fortunately for, for uh, for Crystal uh, Hefner here, she, she avoided the, uh, the extra uh, thing of the, uh, you know, fucked up male manager, uh, like the, uh, the, uh, the Paul thing with the Dorothy Stratton story. Uh, she, didn't, she didn't get uh, involved with the, the, a sub-narcissist <laughs> who then brought her to the main narcissist. Uh, she went, she was fortunate enough to go direct. So, uh, yeah, she, uh, in a modeling gig or something, she met, uh, you know, she was doing like car shows or passing out keychains or, you know, all these sort of uh, good looking women things, trade shows, that kind of, that kind of stuff, you know, dumb, dumb little gigs like that. No, no, nothing big time. Um, and, uh, Somehow, for one of the other models, she finds that that, that you can get the, that there's oh there's a there's going to be a, a party at the Playboy Mansion for uh, Halloween, and apparently they sent out like casting calls uh, for these parties. So and uh, women could submit uh, could email their some photos, and um, maybe they would be chosen. So the, the two of them. Uh, actually did get chosen for this party. So there's this scene where they're waiting in their little uh, sexy outfits uh, Halloween uh, to go to the party at the mansion. Uh, Crystal is in a, a you know, French maid's outfit, with, you know, the, the cropped uh, top and nothing skirt and, you know, the whole, that whole bit and heels, which she said she hates wearing. So, uh, so you know she's doing this doing this role, um, you know the the sexy girl role. So uh, well, it ends up that uh, uh, Hefner actually uh, picks her out. She she gives you know her, her descriptions of what's going on and the scenes and all that are, are really quite good. I I thought the book was well written. It didn't didn't have any uh, co-author uh, you know ghostwriter or anything credits uh, attached to it. So. Uh, apparently, she wrote it herself. Of course, all the everybody has editors and assistants and everything like that. But uh, yeah, she d- does a good job of telling these stories, like describing the uh, uh, entering the mansion for the first time and what what was like at the Halloween party and uh, and how um, you know all these people would would come through and uh, Hef. And uh, what the, the Shannon twins are, are kept uh, uh, behind this velvet rope, and people would walk by and, and gawk at uh, at uh, you know Hefner and the girl that was with um, Crystal waved and hi 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 Hef and and uh, 
Hefner looked up and saw Crystal and said, Come here, little girl. So she did, and the, the end of the evenings like that uh, involved, uh, and then Chris, uh, Hefner's like 81 at this point, 80, 81, so he's already, you know, really old, so. Um, the end of, uh, of evenings like this, uh, which she describes later how, how he gets it up, but uh, he takes a little blue pill, he takes the, you know, uh, the uh, ED uh, medications, uh, and then uh, he, you know, and pr prior to what's going to go on, and uh, they uh, march up the stairs, and everybody applauds because they know it's going to go on. And uh, so, you know, she was asked to go up the stairs with with him, uh, and so she does, and um, they go into his bedroom. And there's this ritual that goes on with his uh, sex thing with uh, in his bedroom. Like he, he uses baby oil for one thing. So he walks, puts baby oil on himself and on his member, you know, whatever. And um, then uh, one after the other, the women would get on top of him and, uh, you know, with on his uh, artificially erect uh, member and, uh, you know, do him. So, uh, and then at the end, uh, nobody's supposed to be on birth control because he's going to, uh, he pulls out. So, you know, it's old, it's easy for old, older men to pull out. So, so he pulls out and, uh, wax it at the end. So he doesn't really, uh, ejaculate inside any of them. So that's, uh, that's what he did. That, that, that's what the world's greatest uh, lover here, I guess. You know, she talks about how everybody thought like he was a great lover or something. I never, you know, my impressions of Hugh Hefner, I never, I never even thought about him being a uh, great lover or anything. It's, uh, like skilled with uh, pleasing women, which he was not. He was not, it, that was not of no interest to him. He's not like going down on the women or anything like that. That seems to be not uh, something that's, you know, of interest to him at all. So, uh, so then they, then uh, he says, well, you want to stay the weekend. So uh, she's going to stay the weekend and she can go to movie night. So uh, um, there's this big ritual uh, thing like, uh, you know, Hefner, I guess, was pretty OCD. So he would like do the same thing. Uh, every uh, week and like Monday nights was uh, manly night that's when the guys came and they played cards or whatever and 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 discussed the women on on, a, on the month where the uh, on the Monday where the magazine comes out the, they look at the magazine and size up the women that's what she says later when she found out about that I guess and you know criticize all the little flaws of the women she says well you know what, what what would they do if we said that we did that to them you know i mean you know these are just you know his friends whatever <clears throat> so and he has movie nights a lot he, he's very sentimental about old movies particularly casablanca uh, casablanca is shown on his birthday and he has a uh, birthday cake that has a like a fake casablanca uh, poster with the names of himself and his leading lady at the moment. And uh, so, yeah, he's really into Casablanca. And on movie nights, one of the movie nights, I guess Saturday, Friday, or whatever it was, uh, he delivers, a, um, gets up and gives a speech in the, in the screening room about the, the film. So he, he, you know, he thinks himself a, a film critic, whatever, as well. So. So, you know, she says he's a smart guy. Actually, on the broadcast I was listening to, she talks about how, you know, how, how very high IQ he, he had. Well, maybe he did. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, she, she ends up just kind of staying because she doesn't really know what else to do. Uh, so she, you know, gives us a real picture of what it's like to stay there. Um, uh, they oh they get an allowance they have to come in uh, on you know, what some some night a week and ask for their allowance and he gets out a box which is by the bed which is also contains his his uh, little pot and his other you know drugs whatever 
and a bunch of cash that the staff puts in. He has like a 70, 70 uh, people staff at his uh, little mansion there. So he um, doles out, you know, like $1,000 each for their allowance for the week, uh, which they're supposed to go and, uh, you know, buy, buy clothes and stuff, you know, keep themselves, uh, well, Playboy material. Uh, uh, Crystal uh, has to dye her hair. Her hair is not blonde. Uh, it's darker, so... So she goes, you know, part of that goes to get her hair done so there's no roots, uh, stuff like that. So um, anyway, she, she ends, you know, uh, the tone of the whole thing, uh, you know, she really talks about how boring it all was, really. And, and, uh, and you know, uh, it's interesting. It's, it's like, you know... Yeah, this we have a predatory person here, um, but yet what he what he is actually doing he he used the media and to make the the, the well the honeypot I guess or the spider web of of attraction here that uh, people willingly flew in flew into. I mean, in in the uh, in the in the this century. <laughs> Oddly enough, I mean, that's why he should have retired and got out of it earlier. But, you know, there was continuing to be greedy for money and uh, fame. Um, you know, he had this series, The Girls Next Door, about um, him and his, and his girlfriends. And he would get uh, $400,000 per episode and they would get nothing. I don't know how they worked this out with unions and so forth. I guess the whole thing was non-union or something. But... Uh, but they would get nothing, and he would get four hundred thousand uh, dollars. The, later, there was a series of, of of getting married when they were going to get married, and uh, he was he and the producer were talking about how they're going to get like eight hundred thousand dollars out of this thing, and uh, Crystal then confronted uh, uh, Hefner because she's she's uh, finally gotten some power. Then you know he's sort of falling falling to pieces as he gets older and she says hey what you know what's the deal here you, you're 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 getting eight hundred thousand dollars and I'm getting uh, two thousand five hundred for the whole series like you know chump change for TV you know so uh, I guess he settled he said she would give her he would give her more although she doesn't say what it was so uh, <clears throat> So yeah, she has a section where she, where she, oh, oh, there's a, there's a, a part about how you, uh, you can't trust anyone. Um, she has a section where, uh, well, she's, she's, he, he proposes to her in this certain sort of offhanded way. He presents a, a they, but they both like the Little Mermaid, which you know I had never seen or whatever. Uh, he was apparently uh, Hefner liked uh, Disney, so it's like, you know. The uh, the wholesome porn of Disney as opposed to the uh, less wholesome porn of what he did, I guess. So uh, yeah, he likes the the edges. Um, so she printed she he presented her with this uh, this box that also had a ring in it. So so he never asked her to marry. He just sort of presented her with the ring and said, "I hope it fits," and it did fit and. Uh, she is, and it's like, okay, now we're going to get married and we're going to do a series. And, you know, everything is about him. Everything is about what he does and the production company wants to do. And, uh, you know, it's just this machine she, she fell into it, really, fell into really. So uh, around that time, she decides she's just going to bolt. So uh, one of the movie nights, she uh, leaves and says, I got I to gotta leave for a I'll be be back, be, be right back. So she she leaves, and uh, she you know tells the guards down at the gate that she's going to Walgreens or something, and and she splits. And um, she'd been working with a musician, uh, what's his name, Justin, something like that, <clears throat> um, who is uh, the son of Doctor Phil, who. Uh, uh, remember how she connected with him. So she's she's starting to make a connection with this guy her own age, the son of Dr. Phil, 
and you know he says oh you can come and live with me so uh so you know she, having nowhere to go and and she's been saving a little money from her uh, uh allowance weekly but not enough so she um goes in and stays with this guy this uh this kid who dr phil's spoiled kid who you know has dr phil and and, and that machine has tons of money too because i don't know how long has dr phil been on network television so you know he has millions whatever and, and the whole thing of these people on tv it's just like they get too much attention, too much award for, for, for nothing, for who they are. And Dr. Phil is just a, a scam. And, and Dr. Phil really screws her because uh, uh, she, she's hanging out with, uh, before she runs away, she's hanging out with uh, Justin, whatever the kid's name is, uh, Phil, Do Dr. Phil uh, McGraw. Oh, Justin McGraw, yeah. Anyway, DeGraw, uh, Dr. Phil, okay? So she's uh, hanging out with Dr. Phil's son, and then she, and he says, "Oh, you should go talk to my father." So she goes and talks to his to uh, his father, and his father says, uh, "Oh, you should, uh, you know, you you you're really not living your life, and you should do it, you know, what you want to do, and you should, you know, really, you know, everything she wanted to hear about her need to escape. You know, she she he provided that." And uh, so uh, she, she uh, went ahead and um, ended up fleeing a little bit later and ended up in Justin's house and they become lovers, of course. And uh, that goes on for a while. And um, there's a, a scene where she's sitting with, uh, with, with uh, Justin or, or something's going on, uh, some sort of studio situation, I think they're filming something. And Dr. Phil comes, or in a band rehearsal or something. Anyway, Dr. Phil comes in and, and is mentioning to another guy, oh, uh, look what the, my brother, uh, or look what, look what my kid uh, captured, you know, basically gloating that his son has uh, been laying this, uh, you know, Playmate. Well, my look, my son got a playmate, you know, in the and and she hears this and says, well, OK, Dr. Phil is scum because he, he set me up to do this, you know, basically. So uh, so uh, I think confirms how rotten Dr. Phil is. Thanks, Oprah. Um, yeah, so they do get married and uh, because he, she, he, she, she gets a call from Mary, the elderly assistant of Hugh Hefner, who's been there for, for uh, decades and decades. Uh, and uh, she says, you know, Hefner's missing you. Hefner really wants you back. Uh, and uh, she uh, ends up going back because she doesn't quite know what to do. And she ends up marrying him when she's 26 and he's 86. And right around that time, he's starting, you know, and this is uh, uh, the end, uh, uh, New Year's Eve uh, on 2012, uh, when they marry. Um, and he died in 2017. So, um, so then, then after that, she said after he was like, you know, around that time is when he really started falling off. Uh, he's been uh, addicted to opioids for a while, so he's, uh, he's, you know, falling asleep at things, uh, and uh, she, she, she works on getting him off of all that, that much of the opiate uh, that he's on. Uh, yeah, he's, he's basically losing it and becoming pathetic, but, you know, he's trying to keep this whole facade up of being demand, you know, so, um, so it all goes on, and, um, Ultimately, yeah, I mean, it, the, the picture that we get of Hugh Hefner is, is you know, this control freak, this kind of pathetic old man who's, whose uh, time has passed by, uh, this person who was uh, given all this reward and, and acknowledgement for, for, you know, kind of like little, really, and, and got more out of it than he contributed, uh, really, and... Um, 
And, you know, he, uh, well, he, he dies of a urinary infection, uh, ironically enough, at the, at the end. Uh, they, uh, they complain about the baby oil. The, uh, she talks about the baby oil. He's, you know, he's using baby oil for lube, which is not proper lube. And so the women are always getting infections all the time uh, because of this. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's just, it's just kind of, uh, it's just sort of horrible. And um, so what does all this mean to me? Okay, well, you know, it's like, it, I'm glad that I never got that, that, uh, that allowance of whatever I want you know, uh, that kind of power, uh, that kind of uh, position where people uh, coddled to uh, what my needs were or what they thought my needs were or what I thought my needs were uh, because it all seems to end up being kind of grotesque. Uh, and, and, you know, with this thing, you know, she talks about how the mansion is just is like a 70s relic uh you know she's in there in 2008 you know first time and she said you know it's all shag carpet it's all direct uh, you know it's it's uh as it was when he decorated it in the 70s so that's kind of kind of strange and and, and the old man as well as he was in the 70s and um you know it's just 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 sad and um and uh, so many of us are, are, are lost in our, our sex. You know, it's funny. It's all about sex, really, this, this book. And, and I guess it's something I read earlier about sex. Um, and, um, you know, as, as animals, you know, behind everything, behind all the shows, we are compelled to have sex uh, instinctually to uh, make more people. So their people keep being made. Uh, okay, I know that we use you know, mammals uh, or a certain type of mammals use it for bonding too, pair bonding and all that. But, it, you know, it's basically this thing about uh, making, uh, having babies and... Uh, Somewhere in the back of everything, there is this this uh, this thing compelling us to do that for that purpose, uh, and then it gets confused with all the other things of of our pleasure. It's for our pleasure, or it's for bonding, or it's for the other person's pleasure, or it's it's uh, it's all just sort of a mess. And and then it's then it's uh, oh it's. Um, it's sinful. No, it's not sinful. You should do it. Uh, and, oh, yeah, it's really sinful, but you should buy this magazine and you can look at the pictures there. Uh, that's not so sinful, except it used to be, but now it isn't anymore. And, you know, it's all just horrible. Um, the roles that we end up you know, I, I don't think anybody were, uh, you know, as I say, you know, I, I think of, of everything as transitional. Like, I think of, there are many times that we see that things could be better, that there is somewhere off there a promised land over the rainbow. Oh, he likes somewhere over the rainbow, too, Wizard of Oz. Uh, so, yeah, somewhere over the rainbow, there's a better land where uh, things will be better and uh, all the men will... Uh, will get uh, consent, and uh, and that won't be uh, that that will still be exciting uh, after you've gone through and said, yeah, I want this, 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 and this, and not this, 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 and this. It'll still feel spontaneous, and it'll still be wonderful. And uh, well, you know, I'm just not buying it. And <laughs> I'm old, so I'm glad I'm out of it. I don't think I will ever have sex with women again uh, because. A, because I don't like the way it's all laid out. I don't like that I'm older now and might not be attracted to people who are the same age as me. Uh, I think you have to set that up a little earlier. Like if I 
set that up when I, in my in my 50s. That might be all right now, but like eh, I don't think I'm gonna get with somebody 72 right now. So you know, eh, no, 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 no. Plus, you know, I'm I'm a I'm a bum. I don't have money. I don't have I don't have Social Security. I don't have all this stuff. You know that. I, I, I'm not Hugh Hefner. I'm not a big. I'm not the the man. I'm not the the rich man. I'm not the. I'm not. Uh, I don't have a pile of. I can't give you an allowance. I. Uh, and I had a, a relationship that that you know I I don't understand. I don't understand what went on in my relationships. I don't understand what my behavior was. I I've, I've been told by people that I am a narcissist, and I don't understand how, uh, you know, uh, 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 people are not that self-aware and I understand that I'm not s aware of how bad I am in relationships, how bad I am when it comes to other people and being a friend or, or a lover for sure uh, and while I'm insecure about money and all this other stuff. So, uh, yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm just looking back at all this stuff feeling like, yeah, well, I would, you know, I was sort of like one of these dudes at one time, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm waving goodbye here, you know, I'm sort of trying to figure out what went on and uh, with myself and looking at the culture I came from and, and trying to, uh, I guess I'm trying to make a little sense out of it while I'm still around and have time and, and I like to read, so. That's why I read these books, and that's why I read uh, Crystal Hefner's book, which I recommend. I think it's a, a, a quite a good book, and um, you know, it speaks to what what we all go through in a certain sense, or definitely uh, young women. Uh, you know, things are kind of worse than ever with all that, with young women trying to be sexy or trying, you know, uh, um, and you know, trying to. Uh, you know the whole the whole uh implant thing you know the the uh <clears throat> the urge to improve oneself the the trans uh transhumanism you know i i consider uh implants uh, a, a a early transhumanist move of of trying to improve uh using technology and i think you know there's going to be more of that and more uh demands for that, uh, consumer demands, people wanting to get ahead of others and, you know, wanting to compete and, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really see that, I'm, I'm not, I, there, there is, I don't, wherever the rainbow is, I'm not seeing the rainbow and I'm certainly not seeing the promised land over the other side of the rainbow. I, um, you know, I, I know that there are, have been other cultures that lived in other ways uh, you know, I'm reading, uh, I'm listening to The Dawn of Everything right now as well, um, about, uh, early civilizations, uh, and how we got to, got stuck here in this sort of, uh, civilization where there's very little equity and, uh, it's getting worse with the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. And this is a story about that. This is a story about outsized wealth and media uh, position uh, that made this uh, little individual, this little Hugh Hefner guy, uh, such a big, big thing that uh, then he could do uh, what he did with all these women and, uh, and uh, which is what this story is. And, you know, I don't know if I'll read the other, st I guess there's Holly and, uh, you know, <clears throat> Some of the others that came before um, Crystal also have books. I saw the I saw the Secrets of Playboy. I thought that was quite good that series. Um, but um, yeah, so I guess I guess that's it. I'm I'm uh, like God. I'm glad I'm not Hugh Hefner, so I didn't end up making a complete ass and fool of myself. Uh, and I'm glad that. Um, I'm glad that uh, Crystal Hefner uh, decided to uh, not only say nice things, but say the truth, because uh, it, it helps to say the truth. And you know, I'm I'm trying to say the truth myself. Uh, you know, when you say the truth, you you have to stop worrying about what what people are going to think. Uh, 
is a helicopter. I saw four military helicopters here in Central Park a little while ago, flying really low, like in formation. You know, those big things with the, uh, that are like, you know, uh, camouflage co color and have two props on, on them. It's like scary shit. So anyway, I think that's uh, all I have to say about um, only say good things. And uh, I'm glad I came up here to do it in the park. Instead of in my little room with the green screen, and um, a year, uh, nine years ago, it was it was uh, it was cold, uh, and it's not cold. It's like well, I don't know, it's like forty-five degrees or something like that now. And uh, nine years ago, it was freezing. And I, I on my Facebook there was a a movie of the Hudson River uh, going by forty-five years ago uh, with. Uh, ice in it so uh, the benefits of global warming until everybody starts dying I guess I'll leave you on with that happy note uh, like and subscribe if you do like and you do want to subscribe <laughs>